Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. My name is Leon Jones. Tonight's topic, I'm going to talk about the Stockholm Syndrome. Now, this is the second component to my three-part series on why black people of today dislike each other. Now, it is very important that you listen to all of the videos. I will have part three coming up on Monday or Tuesday. We as African American people are loving people. We're known as benevolent people. But the problem with us is we tend to deify other races. We hate each other for a number of reasons. But one thing that I can tell you is that when it comes to slavery, I believe a number of us still live in slavery psychologically. Now, the previous video I did, I talked about the uneducation when it became God, or let's say the miseducation regarding God. Now, I wasn't criticizing all Christian people. I'm just making it known that Christianity of today is not necessarily based on the most high. It's based on traditions. And who creates traditions? Man does. Now, when it comes to African American people, we have been indoctrinated by this Eurocentric culture, and we believe that's the correct way of doing things because we don't know anything else. And in the past, if we had education, and when I talk about education, learning the basics of reading and writing and arithmetic, we were killed. See, the white supremacist culture was there to control us. So the first item that they used was religion. And when you break a person down spiritually, they lose faith and hope. Now, the video I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to talk about the Stockholm Syndrome. Because it is apparent that a number of us in the African American community suffer from this illness. So, when it comes to problems, another major reason why black people hate each other so much today is because the majority of us do suffer from a mental illness called Stockholm Syndrome. In case you're not familiar with this illness, Stockholm Syndrome is a psychological perception in which slaves express extreme sympathy and positive feelings toward their enslavers to the point of defending and identifying with them rather than their own hostages or other slaves. This mental illness first took roots in the mind of African American people during the 16th century after slavery was declared legal in the United States and was originally used as a tool of our ancestors or by our ancestors slave masters to instill white supremacy in the minds of all slaves throughout the plantation. Now by using physical punishments such as whippings, lynchings, and raping, what it did, it brainwashed our ancestors into obeying, loving, and trusting them and only them. But over time they began to identify with more needs and wants of their slave masters than their own people. This then produced an entire generation of not just physical slaves, but mental slaves. So after a few generations of Stockholm Syndrome being planted in the minds of our ancestors, you began to see two types of slave or slaves, the field slave and the house slave. Now, both of these types of slaves had differences in philosophies. 
Now the house slave usually lived in the same house as his master. He dressed like his master as well. He ate the same food as his master also. So whenever the house slave identified himself, he always identified himself in the same manner that his master identified himself. Let me give you an example. When his master said, we have good food, the house slave would say, yes, we have plenty of good food. When the master said, we have a fine home here, the house slave said, yes, we have a fine home here. And when the master would be sick, the house slave identified himself so much with his master, he'd say, what's the matter, boss? We sick. Now, his master's pain became his pain, and it hurt him more for his master to be sick than for him to be sick himself. So when the house started burning down, the house slave would fight harder to put the master's house out than the master himself would. But then you look at the field slave, the one who worked outside in the fields underneath the hot sun all day. He didn't get the same treatment that the house Negro got. Instead of sleeping in the nice house with the master, they slept bunched together in one single room with the rest of the field slaves. Now, instead of eating the fresh food from the master's house, they ate the leftover food from the field. Now, needless to say, the field slaves hated their master. Unlike the house slave, the field slave could not and did not identify with his slave master and therefore remain mentally free. And by being mentally free, he desired to be physically free. Now, if someone came to the field slave and said, let's go, let's plot the runaway, he would naturally say, let's do it. How soon can we plan? We see this in the case of Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, and Charles the Slandes, and other slaves who planned mass slave results that led to hundreds and thousands of slaves finding freedom. But if someone came to the house slave and asked him the same question, he'd naturally say, go where? Where could I go without Massa? What could I do without Massa? Where would I live? How would I dress? Who would look out for me? See, the house slave was dependent on the master. The house slave was so brainwashed by his master that he couldn't relate to the struggles of the field slaves anymore. So instead of seeing them as his brothers, he saw them as his enemies. And since he didn't want to lose his role as the house slave, he would sometimes snitch on the field slaves that weren't doing any work in the fields or trying to plot to run away to gain favor with his master. As you can imagine, this brought about a serious hatred between the field slaves and the house slaves, a hatred that has been passed down all the way down to us today. Again, the hatred that the house and the field slave or the contention had for each other has been, has been passed down today. And this is why we don't like each other. Now, the house slaves of today are people like Reverend Al Sharpton, John McWhorter, Steve Harvey, Herman Cain, Charles Barkley, Stephen A. Smith, and Whoopi Goldberg, who are quick to point to the victim, their own people, as the source of the problem rather than the victimizer. White America, seeing the victimizer as the victim of those they are victimizing, is a classic of Stockholm Syndrome, which is a modern-day house slave. And we, the modern-day house or the modern-day field slaves who work all day for the white man, have to put up now, not with just the white man's hatred toward us, but our own people who hate us. This is why black people as a whole can never seem to unite and build massive wealth together as other nations do, because the house slaves do all they can to keep the economical power in the hands of master. Black people who are put in positions of power by white America don't want to see conscious black people liberate from the white man's system 
and succeed on their own because it takes away money from their master, which takes away money from them. And they just, in their minds, they're not going to have that. So they'll do whatever they can to keep us dependent on our oppressors. Now, you can always spot one of these types of black people out there because they want nothing to do with problems or issues facing the people of their own skin color, people like me. These characteristics are clearly present in many of today's black celebrities, especially in the sports arena. For instance, take basketball news analyst Charles Barkley, once stated in a broadcast on TNT that when he played basketball, he said this was the first time in my life where I didn't feel black. When he said that, you could see the euphoria on his face as he recalls the feelings he had from escaping his blackness. Another example would be golf pro Tiger Woods, who, when asked about his race, he went out of his way to construct his own groove. That's Cabellan Asian a mixture of Caucasian, Black, Indian, and Asian, all for the sake of saying, I'm not Black. Then we have one of basketball's greats, Kobe Bryant, who, when asked what he thought about the Miami Heat's effort to support Trayvon Martin, who was gunned down by a white man, George Zimmerman, told the media that it didn't make sense to protest for Trayvon Martin just because I'm African-American. And the list goes on and on and on. So as you can see, our most prominent and influential black athletes of today, who our kids look up to and idolize, have no desire to be or take up for black people, although they're black themselves. So as a result, our youth, or our children who desire to be like them end up taking up their own characteristics and they hate black people as well. Now to sum this all up, I'm going to leave you with the words of one of the founders, black founders of the NAACP, which was not founded totally by black people. Only Ida B. Wells and this man, W.E.B. Du Bois, helped find the NAACP back in the early 1900s. And here's his quote. Children learn more from what you are than what you teach. Now, it is a big problem in the African-American community when it comes to a lot of these house slaves. These are the individuals who are dependent on government. They're dependent on a nine-to-five job for a paycheck, and they will snitch you out any time. And a number of individuals who are enemies to us within the black community are our black preachers. Not all of them, but a number of them. Some of our black women, some of our black men, and the simps. Why? Because these people really want white supremacy to succeed because white supremacy basically allows them to have an income. But the problem with white supremacy that some of these blacks don't understand is that these individuals are black themselves. And they can be thrown under the bus. This is why I believe black people need to learn how to invest and have their own businesses. Now, many of us aren't, and I'm going to tell you this as well. People who look like me are not my brothers and sisters, not everybody. Because black people, our own black people, will dime us out in a heartbeat. I've seen it in the workplace because you have a number of them who want to get in with the boss at work, the master. And if you look at the education, many of us are educated in so many schools, and they don't even teach black history. This is why a number of them, when you hear them speak, they echo the words that they got from their professors in school. A number of them have this delusion that they've made it to the top. They haven't made it at all. They're still working slaves just like I am. 
the difference between people like me who've worked in the field and people who are indoctrinated with white supremacy is that I have the information. I know that the system still exists and I'm not going to depend on white folk for my lifestyle. That's the difference. You see, as an African-American, we have to be twice as smart because not just white folk, and I'm not saying all white folk, but other races of people look at us as savages as well. Why? Because they get the images of us that we take pictures of and I'm talking about the images of dysfunction that we post on social media. What happens? The Jews use our dysfunction and they market our behavior. What do you think all this rap music comes from? We don't own the record companies. Some white man owns the record companies. So they're the ones who help produce the music that has us disrespecting our own women. Who do you think produced the ghetto gaggers when you see white men disrespecting black women on every aspect? And some of these black women in those movies didn't care as long as they're getting paid. So they're going to allow themselves to be devalued. And what I'm teaching is for African-American men and women to value themselves. Black people, we are very beautiful people. We are the ones who have been chosen by the Most High, but we don't know it because we don't allow ourselves to be positive about who we are because we think the standard of beauty is what was promoted by white folks. Listen, we're not white folks. We are African-American folks. We were one of the first people here on earth. Our ancestors came from the most powerful country with all of the resources that the Europeans took from black people over there. Now, some black people did sell slaves to the white man, and you have some black people today who are slaves via some of these Arab people. Don't forget that. But at the end of the day, you have too many African American people who are asleep. They have fallen prey to this white supremacy and they will not give the indication that white supremacy has helped them as long as they're getting a paycheck. But what they have to understand is no matter how successful you are, you're still black. And when the time comes, if you do something wrong, they will throw you under the bus. Look at what they did to Bill Cosby. Look at what they have done to Morgan Freeman. Steve Harvey could be next. When they are paying your salary, they have total control over you. This is what black folk don't understand. When you are getting government subsidized benefits to help you live, they control you. This is why I believe in creating my own establishment. And also, do you want to know why they don't want to give you loans? They don't want you to have anything. They want you to depend on them. I'm talking about the ones who are elitist. They have all the power, money, and fame. But at the end of the day, too many of us as African Americans are sleeping. And let me tell you also, for you folks who interracially date. If you prefer somebody outside the black race, that's fine. However, don't use the other races as a scapegoat by deifying them, trying to slap black men and black women in the face. Because at the end of the day, you're still black. Just because you change teams, your skin color doesn't change. Your culture doesn't change. When you go into a culture of another race, particularly the white race, most of the time you can't even be yourself because they think black people 
are savages. That's because a number of us have put ourselves out there as savages. When you look at what's on TV, and this is going to come up in my next video when I talk about the media's excessive promotion of white supremacy, but I have to add shows like Scandal, Have and Have Nots, um, there's other shows out there, Power, that comes on BET. What do they show? They show us being involved in drugs, gangs, but they don't show us being involved in the corporate world. The only black shows that I've seen that had some positivity to them were The Cosby Show and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. When did those shows come out? In the 80s and 90s. But if you look at today, many of us are brainwashed by what we see on TV, and some of us want to be like those actors on TV. And when I talk about feminism, no African-American woman should be a feminist. Why? Because black people did not have the power, or let's say black men did not have the power to oppress you. White women use black women for the numbers, and white women also use black women so they can classify the whole gender of women for the affirmative action. Because if you look at who gets most of the affirmative action today, who is it? It is white women. But at the end of the day, too many of us as African American people are too blinded to see that. You must also understand that a number of people who call the cops on black men are some black women. And this is why you see a number of white people in some of these videos that Philip Scott of the Advice Show keeps showing about silly things that are happening to black people with the police, barbecue Becky. You're seeing a black man in Indianapolis who paid $1,600 for his apartment, got in the pool with his socks on. Yeah, it's disgusting, but you're calling the cops on a black man for that. You're calling the cops on a black man because a white man got fouled hard in a basketball game. This is the playbook that a number of white folk are using from African-American women who constantly call the police on black men for something, even if they didn't do anything. Now, not all black women, so please don't come on my channel voicing what I'm telling you regarding the truth, because you know some of you sisters are doing it. You're calling the cops. You don't want the man in your life, but you will take all of your nonsense like being called a nigger from a white man. He will disrespect you all day, but you'll be with him because he's a white man, but you don't love him. You think he can replace that black man. Yeah, out of your mind, he's not going to do that either. And some of you brothers too. But at the end of the day, we need to stop deifying the other race and look at ourselves because people like Margaret Sanger, who founded Planned Parenthood, she wanted to exterminate black people. This is why all the Planned Parenthood facilities are in African-American communities. 32% of black women have abortions. That is a lot. That's about 450-something thousand abortions a year by African-American women. A number of us, when it comes to homosexuality, that's also promoted. Why? So it could transmit diseases such as AIDS and other STDs and keeps black people from appropriating. Black folk, what I'm telling you is all this is by design, but too many of you don't understand that. So what I'm telling you to do or suggesting you to do is be more cognizant of who you're interacting with. You know you can't trust some white folk, but you can't trust your own either because they'll stab you in the back quick. So I'm making this video to make you aware that the House Negro 
is the one who held black people down while the field Negro wanted to escape. Now you have to ask yourself, which team would you have been on if you were a slave? I certainly would have been on the field Negro's team. Why? Because people like Harriet Tubman and a lot of field Negroes did escape. They had freedom while the house Negro was brainwashed and dependent on his master to take care of everything for them. And if you look at that, it's happening today with some African-American people. They believe in master and they will do anything to take up for their master. And at the end of the day, the field nigger versus the house nigger or the field Negro versus a house Negro. If you want to know where the hate is, that's where it started after the indoctrination of black people who were forced into Christianity. Now, if you don't believe me, do some research yourself. Look around you. But I know one thing. I'm not going to walk out naive because I know white supremacy still takes place and as black people we are also causing our own self-destruction by killing each other. You look at the black on black crime. You look at the fatherless homes. You look at black men having irresponsible sex. And I told you brothers in my first video and I tell you now, you're not doing the black woman any good by having sex with her have, and she has a baby. You dump her. Now what happens? You sell her pipe dreams. She doesn't trust us. And I can understand. Because some of you brothers aren't in the building families. And some of you sisters aren't in the building families. But some of you sisters, when it comes to leadership, you don't want a man to lead. But you follow a man's behavior because you want to deal with a number of men and be promiscuous as well. So at the end of the day, with the Stockholm Syndrome and this twisted thinking of us having this contention between each other doesn't help any matters. And at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, who loses? We do. Because the system is always going to be there. But if we don't gain any knowledge of how to work the system, but moreover, work with each other, then we will eventually be extinct as a race. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show for this evening, Saturday, July 21st, 2018. You can tune into the 411 Talk Zone radio show every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. If you want to get in on the call, the guest call number is 215-383-5785. If you like my videos, please share and subscribe to the 411 Talk Zone radio show on YouTube so I can continue to give you quality information for educational purposes from a professional and mature perspective. Now, on my channel, I don't engage in debates, controversial issues, or emotional issues. Now, that also depends on the individuals who are receiving the information because some of the content that I am producing is sensitive. Even though I don't curse, for the most part, in my videos, I do touch some nerves. But I touch the nerves of people who don't understand the content and they've been indoctrinated by this system and some of them really deny being black and they don't care about being black. And at the end of the day, they have drama in their lives. And what I'm doing is teaching. I'm giving you information that's 100% positive, but realistic. This is why I don't engage in drama or unnecessary bickering because it is counterproductive. Just like today, if you understand who you are as an African-American person, you will be proud to be black. And once you're proud to be black, 
you will know what your worth is. Because black people, we have a lot of worth. We just have to utilize it. And we can't be worried about what other people think of us. And I'm saying this because I'm giving you the tools so you can succeed. Because once you have knowledge, you have power. And if you have a topic or a new YouTube channel or business that you would like for me to discuss on YouTube or Blog Talk Radio, simply email me at lej6521 at gmail.com. And if you have a comment, please leave your comment in the comment section under the video. But make sure that your comments are pithy. No bloviating, pettifogging, or filibustering if you wish to opine. Now that's it for this video. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. Remember... Please be gentle and respectful to each other and have a wonderful and blessed night. God bless you.